Good morning and welcome to Winter Conference 2024. My name is Justin McMenemy and we are so excited to have each and every one of you join us here in Tremont, Illinois and at 21 locations across North America. This is an opportunity for us to come together as a group of growers, as an organization and to interact to interact on projects that we've been working on over the last year, agronomic research that we've been doing, as well as products that we're gonna to announce today. Each and every year, I look forward to this opportunity. The opportunity not just to share the projects that we're working on, but to learn from you through breakouts, through questions and answers, through sitting across the table at lunch. It's an opportunity to interact as all of us collectively work to get better. You know, as we think about projects, this is the lens that we use to decide which projects continue and, and which projects we stop. You know, we're a technology company. It's, it's what we do. We wake up in the morning thinking and looking for opportunities to bring technology to your operation. But that's not the only thing we do. That, technology for technology's sake isn't, isn't of any value. Our goal is to improve the effectiveness of your input dollar into the creation of grain through technology to drive improved agronomic outcomes across your operation. But we have to do that in a way that we consider how much that technology costs. We can't go around solving $10 problems with $100 bills. And so as we work on a project, our goal is to bring that technology to your operation in a way that improves your agronomic outcome, but factors in how much it costs to bring that technology onto your farm. And we want to do it in a way that within, that within one to two years, you've paid off that technology. And for the rest of the years that you use that product, it's an income earner on the farm. Now, as we think about projects, some of the projects we're going to talk about today, we also have to understand how it is that growers and farms across North America and across the world bring that technology onto their farm. So if we think about the industry, let's just talk about North America for a second. There are around 100,000 decision makers in row crop farming in North America. Right around 100,000 planters are gonna put a crop into the ground in 2024. One of the ways that new technology comes onto the farm is through the purchase of a brand new planter right from the factory. Let's take a guess, how many how many planters this year that put a crop into the ground are going to do so are going to be brand new factory planters? The answer is about 5%. Only about 5% of the farms in North America this year are going to use a planter that is brand new. In fact, as we talk to growers, what we have seen and what we have heard is that over half of the farms in North America will never purchase a brand new planter, whether this generation or next generation. Half of the farms, the way they bring technology onto the farm is either through the retrofit or through purchasing a used planter. But as we talk to growers, what we've also heard and what we've also observed is that 71% of growers know that the planter is the performance machine in the fleet. That if you think about all of the equipment across the farm, it is that planter that has the largest, out, the largest impact on converting an input dollar, whether it's our seed program or our on-planter fertility program, into grain, into yield. And 71% of those growers not only know that the, the, the planter is the most important pass, but they plan to make a change to the planter before next year. And that's the group that we are very passionate about, that two thirds of the industry that is gonna bring technology onto their planter to improve their agronomic outcome, but for budget reasons, for other reasons, is not going to ever be purchasing a brand new planter. And so, so we're focused on that aftermarket, on that retrofit market, as well as we have technologies that come through, come through various OEMs globally. One of the technologies that we, that we brought to market about 15 years ago is the 2020. The 2020 is an in-cab monitor that gives you, the grower, the confidence in the cab in those precious hours of planting, in those precious hours of putting the crop in the ground, the confidence that your equipment is performing as you need it to. 
to give you the highest and the best agronomic outcome. Before the 2020, this is how most of us evaluated the performance of our machinery as we were planting or as we were applying product. We'd look through the back of the glass, the back glass of the tractor, and see if anything looks out of range or out of, out of, out of spec. And then we'd come back a few days later, a week later, and we would, we would look to, to scout the field to see had our equipment performed well a week before. And it, it was 15 years ago as we brought the 2020 into the cab that growers now had the ability to take the information from their machine and have that information at their fingertips to make decisions as to whether they keep going or whether they stop and they fix. And we started that journey by just taking information that was already there, like seed sensing data. And then we slowly over time have been adding new information with smart firmer or with load pins or with row unit ride sensors. All of that giving more information to you, the grower, in the cab to make the right decision. You know, it's interesting. We, over the years, we've talked to a lot of growers that they've, they've brought the 2020 into the, into the cab. And sometimes that first pass or that first day with the 2020, it's a... It's a different experience for guys. You know, they're used to, to planting and it kind of being a, a quiet event, but now I've got this monitor sitting there and it's, it's beeping and it's burping and it's making, it's making showing red, red uh, errors and things, and it, it can be a stressful event. You know, I've heard them equate it to that, that neighbor sitting in the buddy seat. You, you know the neighbor I'm talking about, the one that kind of annoying in the cab there, right? And so the, the growers will actually say, you know, I. I, it used to be peaceful. I, I'd like to uh, to have I'd like to have it not making as much noise. The interesting thing is, as you look at those growers, as you talk to those growers across the pass, across the field, and across the season, what we actually find is that usually by the end of the year, if you look at how they're interacting with the 2020, it looks a lot more like this. You know, they've become comfortable. They've they've gotten. Uh, they've gotten, they see that information that's available to them, whether it's through maps or whether it's through metrics, and, and now they can look from one piece of information to the next to continue to collect that confidence. And in fact, that same grower will oftentimes come to us at the end of the year and say, man, I, you're going to have to pry the 2020 out of my cold, dead hands. In fact, is it possible for me to get more information available to me? Because I, I got one screen for for my liquid program, I've got another screen for my downforce, I've got another screen with some maps, I've got another screen from some metrics, and I'm wearing my thumb out going from one screen to the next. It's for that group, for those guys, I'm proud to announce today the 16-inch monitor for the, 20, the Gen 3 2020. The 16-inch monitor is the largest screen in in the industry, it's twice as large as the 10 inch monitor is, and it gives you the visibility as you add more and more technology, more and more information on the pass. We're gonna be in a limited commercial launch for the spring of 2024, and so we are excited to, to bring this to market. One thing that's really cool as we think about the way that we've architected the Gen 3 is that unlike any other modern industry, we have a little box called the display base module. You don't need to remember that name, it's unimportant. But as you bring a Gen 3 in, it go, that part goes under the seat. And really the screen is, is separate from the brains. What that means is that as we bring the 16-inch monitor to the market, the 16-inch monitor is compatible with every single Gen 3 that has ever been sold since 2018. And that's a different way to bring technology into the market because most of the other technology companies out there, they come out with a brand new monitor, a brand new screen, a brand new feature. What do they ask you to do? Trade the whole thing in in order to get the new display, not with precision planting. Last year, we started the conversation of what do I do with the information once I'm done in the past? You know, Justin, there's still value for that information in season, after season, and as I use that information across multiple seasons. And we started the conversation last year with a product that we called Panorama. Panorama, the definition of the word, is an unobstructed view of one's surroundings. And that's our passion behind the project. We want to give you, the grower, an unobstructed view of the 
the information that you collect across your farm. Now, a lot of other companies in the industry are going to say something very similar, but they're going to say you can have an unobstructed view if you bring all of your information to me. And we take a very different approach. Our desire, our passion, our goal is for you to have an unobstructed view of your information from where it is that you sit. On whichever platform, whichever company it is that you collect and house your farming operation data, we want Panorama to be compatible with that platform so that you can simply and easily and quickly move that information from Panorama to where it is that you house your data. So as we think about the 2020 and we think about Panorama, our goal, our mission is across the horizon from in the cab to in the season to after the season to multi-season for you to be able to view, to analyze, to summarize, and to share your information more readily than any other information across your operation. Let's use an example here. So let's go to the sprayer pass. This last year, we announced the Symphony nozzle system, and uh, it, what that does is it gives you the ability to have turn compensation and nozzle by nozzle swath on the, on the sprayer, and when combined with 2020, you have a greater amount of visibility into the performance of your herbicide program. Now, we also announced a couple years ago that we're working on a project called the Symphony camera system. The Symphony camera system is a set of cameras that are installed on the boom of the sprayer, and one of their main purposes is to be on the lookout for weeds so that we can inform the Symphony nozzles what rate to put down or whether or not to spray. And so the Symphony camera system is going to be looking for broadleaf, it's going to be looking for grass, it's going to look for maturity, and based on the input you give it, we're either going to change the rate of the herbicide program or we're going to turn off in a targeted spray application. But for us, we look and we say, wait, what? we got a camera mounted on a sprayer that's going to cross every acre of your operation multiple times a year. We don't only see weeds, you can see your crop. And so we've also taken the, the Symphony camera system and started to look and analyze and provide information to you of things like stand count and things like crop health. So this information is, you can, across a day, you may cover 500, 600 acres, and you may remember one or two spots in the field, but it's, it's a stressful event to be running a sprayer, right? Or not everybody on the farm is in the sprayer. And so we may remember a few things about the day from scouting the fields, but we're not gonna remember a lot of the aspects. And so as we move from the 2020, we pull into the shed, we fold up the sprayer, we start heading into the house, we can now use Panorama to analyze and summarize what has happened that day. Here's an example of a weed density map. So we just finished spraying this field and we're gonna get a map that shows us where in the field did we have the highest weed density. Now remember we have cameras on the, on the sprayer so not only do I need a, not only can I have a green and a red map to show us weed density but I can actually click on images that we're taking as part of passing through the field. So we can set the Symphony nozzle system to take a photograph every few acres or we can set it off of thresholds where when we see weeds or a large patch of weeds, we take a photograph. So as you're walking back into the house after a day of spraying, you can click and you can start to see what does that part of the field look like that we just applied the herbicide program to. Which allows us then a week or 10 days later to go back across the farm and target certain points on the farm to make sure that that herbicide pass was effective as we hoped it would be. Because oftentimes we have to make a decision. Are we gonna go back through or did we, get the, did we get the kill that we were looking for? So that's in season, now let's move to the combine. Right, as the combine goes through the field, that's the receipt, that's the outcome. That's what all the input dollars, all the effort of the year ultimately shows how well we converted input dollars into grain. And we can use Panorama to allow us to start to dig into the information to not only understand where the yield is, yield maps show us where the yield is, right? But as we compare that to other information that we collected, we can now start to understand why the yield was. 
Now, there's some of those maps that are very common. You think about a yield by hybrid map. You know, that, that's a map that is very important on the operation. It informs the seed selection for next year. We're all getting a little bit smarter each and every year of how certain hybrids respond on each of our operations. And Panorama will provide a yield by hybrid map. But as we think about the information that's available on the 2020, the technology that's available through precision planting, we have a product like Smart Firmer. Smart Firmer attaches to the row unit and it's going to give you, for every foot, for every field, across the entire farm, it's gonna give you visibility into the organic matter and the cation exchange capacity of your soil. It runs right in the furrow, right next to where the seed is going into the ground. So we're gonna get a layer, we're gonna get information of what our soil looks like three inches deep. Whether or not last year's residue is being incorporated into the soil and that we have residue sitting right next to the seed, pulling moisture away and introducing disease into our input dollar. We also have the ability to look at the moisture of the soil. If there's enough moisture in the soil, the day we plant it to imbibe this, be imbibed by the seed to start the germination process, or if we need to wait for a rainstorm. All of this information now can be compared to yield and we can start to understand how decisions like tillage, how decisions like tiling, how decisions across the farm are impacting how the yield is created. And we think about a weed density map from, from Symphony cameras. We can now start to understand whether or not that herbicide pass paid. Right, you talk to a grower in June, July, or August, what are they often doing? Well, this herbicide, it's gonna cost this, fungicides cost this, this is the price of crop, so I'm gonna need this many bushels to save in order to justify it. And oftentimes, you have to run that calculation two or three times a year. With Panorama and with Symphony cameras, we can now start to learn. We can't learn necessarily in the way that we can impact what happened last year, but we can start to learn how does herbicide, how does fungicide respond on our crop, on our soil, with our weather, with the year that was to inform the decisions coming next year. You know, another aspect that we've talked about a fair bit is how important it is to get the information from 2020, from Panorama, into the other platforms across the industry. There's a number of partners that each of you have the opportunity to work with to house your operations information, and there's a lot of reasons to use different ones across the industry. And so for us, starting last year as we were at Winter Conference, we, we said out loud and we've continued to work with companies across the industry to connect Panorama to various platforms across the industry. And, and today, I'm gonna announce two connections. Panorama is going to be, it is commercially available for spring of 2024. It is in the App Store today. And the two connections that I'm announcing here are live for spring of 2024. So if we go to the, the web and we look at the, the landing page for Panorama after we've logged in, we can go to manage operation and we'll see two connections. The first is with Climate Field View. And as you, many of you know, we have, had a connect, we have had a relationship with Climate Field View for over a decade. It is a very important connection as lots of growers use the Field View, Field View platform to house their, their information across the farm. The other one that we're announcing today is, a, is one that, that we know that you're gonna be very excited about, growers across the industry are gonna be excited about, and that is Panorama is connected to and can flow information automatically into John Deere Ops Center. Coming out of last year, we had a conversation with the, the Ops Center team and, and what we saw very quickly is that we both agreed that a connection between Panorama and Ops Center was a very important aspect of allowing you as a grower to have an unobstructed view of your, of your information. And so I wanna thank the John Deere team, I wanna thank the FieldView team, the Panorama team over the last year, working to get these connections grow, going. And what I can tell you is there are 10 more projects like this in flight. 10 more organizations that have reached out to us and we're working together to get those connections put, put in place so that that information can flow seamlessly to their platform according to your desires, according to your settings. They're not quite done yet, 
We weren't sure whether they're going to be ready for spring of 24, so we're not going to announce them today. But I do anticipate more announcements to come as we head into the spring and into the summer. And so also live today, is this is us logging into our John Deere Ops Center account, you can see the panorama card within Ops Center. So that connection is also, also able to be set up today and heading into spring of 24. As I said, our passion for 2020 and for Panorama is to give you the maximum amount of information in a way that is easily digestible, easily discernible, easily able to make decisions, whether it's in the precious hours in the cab, the air seeder, the strip till rig, the planter, the sprayer, the side dress rig, we want to provide sensors and provide information that allows you to make the decisions to optimize that input dollar. And then have that information available to you, whether you're scouting in the field, whether you're back in the office scouting on what's going on, or whether you're after the season looking at the ROI of decisions that were made or connecting that information with the rest of the information across your farm. Some of you may remember last year was our 30th year as a company. And, and at Winter Conference, I, I took an unconventional approach, which was to talk about a number of projects in our history that had not worked out. I talked about a couple projects that we worked on that we learned a ton of lessons, and we, we learned a lot about agronomy, but ultimately a product didn't come from it. And one of those projects that I talked about was the, the 1010 project. Back in the early 2010s, precision planting was aiming for and was developing a, a full planter. And in, we were aiming for spring of 2014 to bring that to market. But for various market reasons and other reasons, that didn't happen. But what I talked about last year is what did happen. What did happen is all of that research, all of that passion, all of that learning found its way into our product line. It found its way through things like VSET and V-Drive, Smart Depth, Smart Firmer. In fact, a large portion of the product line we offer today is from technology that was developed for and was going to come to market as part of the 1010 program. And today, here at Winter Conference, I'm pleased to announce what is the next product in the line, in the heritage of the 1010 program. You know, as we, as we took that 1010 planner and for the last time folded it and put it into the shed. That wasn't the end of our research. That wasn't the end of our interest. It wasn't the end of our passion of understanding the mechanics of taking a seed with a maximum yield potential out of the bag and putting it into soil to give ourselves an even emerged crop. In fact, over the last 10 years, our R&D organization has continued that research across multiple continents, across multiple colors, across multiple crops, all with the passion of understanding how to effectively grow a crop, how to take that input dollar and convert it into grain. We've had a lot of engineers riding on a lot of, a lot of planters over the years. You know, we sat down as I was preparing for this conversation. We sat down and we said, man, how many different agronomic trials do we think we've run as an organization over the last decade? How many different closing system studies and row cleaner studies and downforce studies and banded fertility studies and seed studies have we done? And, and honestly, I was just talking to the R&D organization. We're not including the 100 plus studies a year that Mr. Webster does out at the PTI farm. And so we thought, I mean, we've done studies in Argentina, we've done them in Brazil, Australia, New Zealand, all across Europe, the US, Canada, and I'm sure there's other places we're forgetting. These are just the places that I could find pictures for. And we did, ran, a little, ran a little math, and by our estimation, we think a conservative estimate is that we've run over 200 different configurations of planters, different colors, different ages, different products, all trying to understand for the soils on this earth, how do we put a seed in the ground and get maximum yield out of it? And that's a lot of wrenching. 
200 different studies is a lot of wrenching. If you want to see if an engineer has been part of a yield study, just shake his hand somewhere around May and then take a look at his knuckles and see if they're, they're busted out because he might have been changing closing systems between passes for a week or two. Now, when we get done planting, that's not the end of the study. Two weeks later, we come back to this, come back to the site, and now we want to look at emergence. We want to see how the crop has responded, how the seeds have responded to how they were treated on the way in. I'm not talking about chemical treatment, I'm talking about physical treatment on the way into the ground. And we keep all of that information in one place, and so I went to the software engineers and I said, how many plants have we analyzed over the last decade? The answer came back just a few over, just a few over 29 million. That's a lot of analysis. That's a lot of information that we've collected. It's a lot of interns. It's a lot of counting that's gone into it. And it's, it's with that focus, it's with that passion, it's with that goal, it's with that knowledge that we are pleased to announce today the Cornerstone Planting System. You know, the cornerstone planting system, as I said, is the heritage of the 1010 program. What was 10 years ago, 12 years ago, the 1010 row unit here? And you can look and you can see what, if you squint just right, you can see the beginnings of furrow force. You can see a, a pre commercial speed tube. You can see the beginnings of, of delta force. What was the 1010 row unit has now turned into, with all of the decade of research and passion, has turned into the cornerstone planting system. And so for the first time, from the bar to the tail, it is precision planting technology. You know, as we, as we brought this to market, we, we really wanted to focus on the why. What, what is the value? How can we challenge the status quo as we bring technology to your operation that drives yield in an economic way. One of the things that we are very passionate about is this is an integrated precision planting technology solution. You know, we think about the, the retrofit market and we think about Delta Force. Delta Force is one of the most widely adopted ag, ag technologies on the planter over the last decade. And by my count, there's somewhere between 20 and 25 row units that Delta Force can be used on globally. So many different colors, so many different ages. But the reality is, is every time that we start a project to make a new row unit compatible with Delta Force, we walk up to a row unit that's already designed, it's already been done, it's already sold, and it's already in the field, and we hold a load pin in one hand, a cylinder in another one, and we go, how do we get it on there, right? This is the first time where we have taken the entire system and every component is designed with the knowledge of and the expectation of the other components in the system. Another aspect for us was the flexible factory. A flexible factory build. Now flexible and factory aren't exactly two words that you often hear in the same sentence. In fact, they're, they're a little bit like magnets where you get them close to each other and they start shaking. Can't quite get flexible and factory to touch each other. And why is that? Now let's think, doesn't matter the industry, let's build a factory. We're gonna build a factory. First thing you gotta do after you build a factory is you're gonna measure its efficiency. How much effort do I put in and how much stuff do I get out? Now in this theoretical factory, in this theoretical company that we just built, let's imagine for a second that the guy who runs the factory is the one in charge. Not the engineering lead, not the sales lead, not the marketing lead, the factory guy is the one in charge. How many versions of the product does he want to build? One. That's the answer, right? He wants to build one version and get it as streamlined as absolutely possible. Now that's not exactly how all factories and all industries and all, all companies work because there's very few companies where they're gonna let the guy who runs the factory run the, run the whole company. But the reality is, if we think about the 100,000 growers in the industry, how many versions of a planter are there? 
You know, just within this room in this week across North America, we're going to have about 4,000 farms represented. My guess is that there are every bit of 3,000 configurations of planters that are going to be represented. Whether it's closing systems or row cleaners, whether it's liquid systems, the reality is the factories that produce planters make about five or six versions. But what's used in the field is thousands of versions. And so as we built a facility, for those of you that are in Tremont or for those of you that have been to Tremont in the last six months, you come in from the north at the intersection of 155 and 74, we build a brand new facility. From the moment that we started that facility, we wanted to build a flexible factory that can configure and build the cornerstone planting system so that from the factory, you can get the technologies that the agronomy, the cropping system, and your budget intersect at. And optimize the design, right? There's a lot of years between what we knew in 2013 and what we know in 2024. There's a lot of studies that have been done. There's a lot of sitting on the side of the field busted knuckles trying to adjust the planter. And so I'm not going to get into all of the details about the row unit, the technical details. Caleb Schlater will be presenting in a breakout later today. But I want to talk about a few things. One is the performance of the row unit. You know, two years ago, we launched Reveal, and we talked about how the trailing wheel on Reveal reduced the shock load that went into the bar and went into the row unit, and how that improved how that row unit rode. And for many planters with a drop, style, a drop style seed tube, that's gonna improve the spacing and improve the outcome of the, pa the planting pass. And what we, as we came to the row unit, we wanted to run that same test. And so we ran the test both with a leading gauge wheel and a trailing gauge wheel. And what we found is that the same physics apply to the gauge wheel. And so you can see a trailing gauge wheel. Caleb will talk more in detail on that, but a, a, acute focus on the performance of the planting system. The adjustment of the planter. Each year as we bring that planter out of the shed, we need to make adjustments. We need to make sure that opening discs are right. We need to make sure that our closing system is lined up. And there's a lot of planters where that is a long, drawn out, bloody knuckle affair to get that planter adjusted. And so we've put some creature comforts in here so that one, we can adjust the planter easily and with confidence we can, set, we can set that planter. And then ease of use in field. 200 yield trials, we have learned, as the nationwide commercial says, we've learned a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. You know, when is it that the string off the seed bag gets caught in the meter? It's when the meter's completely, or when, the, when the, uh, the hopper's completely full, right? Right after you load it up. So we've thought about those things and put design features in here so that even when things aren't going according to plan, we can keep moving. We can keep moving. You know, as I said at the beginning, an important part for us to understand technology is not just what the technology does, but how technology comes to the farm how the decision is made to bring technology onto the farm and how it makes it onto the farm. So let's think for a second about the OEMs. You know, we said on a given year, about 5% of the farms in North America are gonna have brand new paint that they're gonna roll off the trailer and they're gonna plant with. And, and there's, there's good reasons to bring, a, to bring an OEM planter onto the farm, to bring a brand new planter onto the farm. And, and we've talked to a number of growers over the years that says, this is how you choose what, what is it about it? What is it about the OEM solution that brings that planter onto your farm? And, and growers will talk about familiarity. They'll say for two generations, we've traded out the planter every five or six years for a brand new planter and things are working out for us. So we're not really looking to make a change. Guys will talk about convenience. I had one guy I was talking to about OEM planter. He said, listen, I lease, I don't grease. That's what I do. More power to you, right? There's guys that are large organizations buy lots and lots of equipment and they can get involved in a mud program and they can get a, a lot of discount on, on equipment that they bring onto the farm. That's a good reason. Wish I could get in on some of that action sometimes. 
And then there's prestige, right? Let's just say it out loud. There is something awesome about the smell of new paint on the farm, right? It was about 25 years ago that precision planting really started to change the conversation. And in some ways, that conversation started with an aftermarket. You know, that we talked about the factory that only produces four or five different versions of the planner, but we have 3,500 versions of the planner in this room here today, 3,000 versions of the planner today. What happened? What happened between the end of the factory line and by the time that first acre started? We had to make adjustments. We had to add row cleaners. We had to change the closing system, put a liquid system on there. And so oftentimes what we see is there really isn't bringing a planter, a planter right off the end of the line and putting it into the farm. They're going to make adjustments. We're going to tailor it. We're going to customize it to feed the need. And then precision planting continued the conversation. And we started to talk more and more about what we call the retrofit market. Now that's the market where we're going to take a planter that was built years and years ago, and we're not just gonna update it in the sense of changing out bushings, greasing it, and keeping the performance largely the same. We're gonna start taking off technology, start taking off pieces, and we're gonna actually change the performance of the machine. We're gonna change the accuracy of the planter. We're gonna leave all the parts that don't wear out alone, and we're gonna change the parts that change the agronomic outcome on my farm, on the planter pass. So as we think about the retrofit market, talk to growers that retrofit planters and they'll first talk about customized. They'll talk about how important it is for the planter to be configured in a certain way to fit within their cropping system, to fit within their agronomic goals. And they'll say, man, I just, I can't get it out of the factory. So I have to take one that existed and I have to make it into what I need it to be. Talk about progressive. You know, it is a fact that every company in the entire industry has now publicly said that the method by which they bring technology to the market is through the retrofit channel. And so for the growers that are out there that are leading edge and cutting edge growers, the way to continue to be on that leading and cutting edge is to retrofit the equipment you have. And oftentimes it's gonna be three, four, maybe five years before those technologies are gonna find their way into the factory. And then there's cost effective, right? If we're not changing out the hardware that doesn't wear out, we have the ability to save a shiny nickel, to sh save quite a bit. And we've done analysis and for a brand new factory planner, over half of the price of that planner is parts that don't wear out, is parts that aren't that much different than they were 20 years ago. As we worked on Cornerstone, as we worked on the Cornerstone planning system, the question we wrestled with is, is there room for a new category? Is there room to challenge the status quo and, and bring technology onto the farm in a different way than has been over the last 25 plus years? You know, we think about, let's just talk for a moment about OEM planners, brand new planners. Over the last five years, in a lot of situations, the price of a brand new planner has doubled. Demand was high, grain prices were high, chips were low, and the price of planners got pretty crazy. And I'm talking to growers now that are looking out over 2024 and they're looking at grain price and they're looking at input prices and they're looking at, at their yield goals and they're saying, I change planners every five years, I get a new one, but this year the quote looks a lot different than it has the last couple times. The value of used equipment has gone one way, the price of new equipment has gone another way. I don't know what to do this year. We might not be able to make the flip the way we have in the past. This is where we're aiming. This is where we're targeting. This is our passion for the cornerstone planting system. So when we think about the cornerstone planting system, it brings the smell of new paint, right? This is a, a factory built solution that as it comes onto your operation, you will be the first user of that planting system. It brings cost effective. 
We're only replacing technology. We're not replacing the hardware that doesn't wear out. And it's personalized. The planners across North America, the planners across the world are already personalized. And we've kind of had to figure a way out how to fit a couple versions through the factory and then get them personalized before they make it to you. And for the first time with the Cornerstone planting system, we have now built a factory and a design that can bring that personalization, that integration, that clean fit and finish look all the way into the factory without having to sacrifice having it be custom personalized to your operation. You know, as we talk to growers, over half of the growers, as I said at the beginning, will never purchase a brand new serial number right out of the factory for a planter on their operation. And so we wanted to, to think through that. What, what does that look like for over half of the industry as they look to change planters? Now, as we talk to growers and as we experience ourselves, what, what it looks like is oftentimes about a year before you go to change planters, you're gonna start the conversation. You may start the conversation with dad and, and say, hey dad, I think it might be time for us to update the planter, upgrade the planter. What are you thinking? Yeah, I, th I think that's a good idea. Now typically you're gonna, gonna set a budget and typically you know your row spacing that you're looking for and you also know the number of rows you're looking for. So what's left? We've got budget, we've got row spacing, we've got number of rows. The two things left is color and age. So if you're like me, you start going out to Tractor House, you start going out to Big Iron and you look and say, how much dollar, or how, much, how much can my dollar buy? How old a planner for the technologies that I'm looking for can I afford? And so that's the exercise we did. Coming into last fall, we wanted to build a, build a planner, we wanted to understand this system, this, the, the mechanisms of this, and so that's what we did. And so we set our budget at at $250,000. So we went out to Tractor House, we went out to Big Iron, and we said we want a 16 row 30. We want to understand how much technology and how much planner can we get for $250,000. And so we landed on a fairly popular planner, an exact emerge. For about, if our budget was 250, we took all of the exact emerges of different ages and we started averaging them together and what we landed on is we could afford a 2019 exact emerge. Now the average planter in the industry is probably six, seven, eight years old. This one's five, so we're on the younger side of average. For a five-year-old planter, we've probably run, it's probably seen 10,000 acres in its life. So it's, it's not a spring chicken, but it's not an old man either. What we also notice, and you guys notice this too, as you go through Tractor House, as you go through Big Iron, there's that two-word phrase that everybody includes, right? You guys know what the two-word phrase is? Field ready, right? Field ready, and we all know what field ready means. It means they wanna sell the planter is what it means. Very, very, very rarely are we gonna roll a field ready piece of equipment off the trailer and go right into right into the field. And, and we, we assume that for a planter that's five years old, it's got 10,000 acres on it. So we went and we looked at the recommended list of service parts, the recommended list of wear parts, and we said, okay, let's, let's go through this planter and let's get it ready for the field. Now, like anybody else, that list is pretty long and you look and you say, well, let's, uh, let's find where my budget line falls on, on going through the, through the planter. And so that's, that's what we did as well. And we went through and we, we made a number of adjustments to the planner, upgrade, uh, improvements to the swapping out wear parts on it. And for us, heading into next year, that was $1,255 a row or about $20,000. So, so all in, we look for our budget, we can afford about a five-year-old high-speed planner. And the budget comes in at about $239,000. So let's now think about Cornerstone. Remember, what we just talked about is the purchasing decision, the purchasing method for over 50% of the growers, 50% of the operations across North America. Let's compare that to what Cornerstone would look like. So as we said, we're gonna be a flexible factory. We can configure this system 
all the way across the technology spectrum of the technologies that precision planting provides. And so we went and we configured it to be very close to what that planter was to that exact eMERGE planter. Now I'm going to tell you, we're about a year out from being in the market. We're going to be pre-commercial going in. We're going to be doing a lot of testing in spring of 24. So these prices are estimates, but we, we wanted to put pencil to paper to really understand not only the status quo, but to understand where we want to end up as an organization bringing Cornerstone to market. So a 16 row planner with what we'd call an OEM tech package. We're gonna match the technology that comes out of the factories across the globe. We end up at about 164,000 or about $10,000 a row. But with Cornerstone, we have the ability to add in the factory, factory installed, factory fit and finish, we have the ability to add technologies that are available in no other factory across the globe. So we added furrow force control. That allows furrow force to see each and every foot across the field and it can adjust the pressure on the tail to make sure that we are closing the trench and getting good seed to soil contact. We added a row by row liquid system that's gonna give us turn compensation and row swath and allow us to put variable rate on the planter through our liquid fertility program. And then we added Conceal, an integrated two by two attachment that prevents us from having to extend off the front of the planter for a two by two attachment or prevents us from needing to extend the closing system and making, our, making us wider as we're folded, an integrated system. So with these three technologies added at the factory, we end up coming in at about 197K in this, in this exercise, or about $12,500 per row. Now I know the question that's in each and every one of your mind right now. Okay, Justin, I think I understand where you're headed. Which planter bar do I use? Our passion, our conviction, our mission, and our goal is that the answer to whatever bar you're looking at, the answer can be yes. No matter the age, no matter the color, our desire is that you can use the hardware that doesn't wear out. And we've taken a couple approaches to this in our, in our testing, and we've got two examples of them in the room here with us today. On your left, you can see a planter that we are building out. It's a 16-row cornerstone planter that we are building out to be tested here in the spring of 2024. And on your right, we have a small Harvest International Bar, it's a four row planner, we got three rows connected to it, and we've been working with Harvest International to work through the technical and the logistics of taking cornerstone planting systems from the factory in Morton and sending them to Storm Lake, Iowa to be assembled into a full cornerstone planter with a Harvest International Bar. As well as tests looking at all of the various bars and all the various ages and all the various colors that are out there. And so I'm gonna spend a little time talking through our little exercise here with the, the 16 row. Again, we're saying to use the equipment that doesn't wear out and so we went and we found a bar that we had. It was a 20 year old NT bar. It's been sitting outside for a while and so we said, you know what? We're gonna build a planter out of a 20 year old NT bar. Now we went to Tractor House, we went to, to Big Iron, we wanted to understand about what would it cost to buy a, a 20 year old NT bar and buy, about $30,000 you could get a, a 20 year old NT bar. But well, we wanted to go through it. 20 years old is a long time. So that's what we did. We went through the planter bar. We changed out the tires, we changed out all of the hydraulics, we added a liquid system and we ran it through the powder coat. Now we looked at things like bushings and we looked at things like pivots and they didn't need to be changed, they were tight, so we left those alone. All in, for our exercise, we were in for about $15,000. So let's now make the comparison. If we look at the five-year-old planter, five-year-old high-speed planter with 10,000 acres on it, we were about 239, 240. We take a 2025 cornerstone planting systems, we combine it with a, with a 20 year old bar and we configured it two ways. The first way is very similar to what comes out of the factories across, across North America. And in that configuration all in we're about 209. 
Then we add in the technologies of Furrow Force, Conceal, EMHD, and now we have a high performance agronomic machine coming directly from the factory and we come in at about 242. Now here, I wanna tell you something. You can't put together a financial model like this, a comparison in front of 4,000 people and get all the nits out of it. There's a lot of nits to pick. There's a, there's a, well, Justin, what about this? And did you consider this? And in my situation, that, and this, and this. Here's the thing, I am not putting this on the screen so that we compare 242 to 239 and say, well, the difference is 3,000. What I'm putting it on the screen is to show our passion, our conviction, and our mission, which is to look directly at how half of the growers in North America bring new technology onto their farm through the purchase of a new serial number planter that's new to them, but has run 10,000 10, acres or more somewhere else, and saying we want to challenge that status quo. We want to create an experience that has prestige of new paint, is cost effective because we're not replacing the hardware that doesn't wear out and it's personalized to your cropping system, to your agronomy, to your yield goals and to your operation. For us, this is our aim, to bring technology to market that improves the agronomy on your operation in a cost effective way, that respects the dollar in your pocket and says, you only want to spend that dollar on technology that's going to improve the outcome. Technology that's going to pay for itself and then become an income earner on the farm. As we think about the projects that we're working on and the products that we've talked about today, our passion is your operation. Whether it's 2020 and panorama of giving you information when you need it, how you need it, so you can make the best decision right now and equip yourself for better decisions in the future, in the cab, in the field, in the office, after the season, or with the rest of your information across the, across the farm, that's our goal. And with the cornerstone planning system, it's with the recognition that things are tight. And, and technology in many ways is how your operation has the opportunity to improve the margin. But you can't spend $100 to solve a $10 problem. And so we want to focus on technologies that are going to improve the yield, improve the outcome of your operation in a cost-effective way that challenges the status quo. I thank each and every one of you for your time today. I thank each and every one of you for your attendance. We value the relationship above almost everything else. The opportunity to sit down and talk in this forum at, at Winter Conference, whether it's in the hall, whether it's at lunch, whether it's in the Q&A session of a breakout, but the opportunity across the year to sit down and talk about the challenges that your organization has, whether it's in agronomy or whether it's in equipment. And so I'm excited about the rest of the day. We have great presenters presenting our agronomic research, more detail on the projects that we're working on. I'm so excited for today. I hope you each have a great day. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to Winter Conference. My name is Taryn Johnson and it is my honor to welcome you on behalf of the entire team here at Precision Planting. We are joined today by farmers from around the world and we thank you for choosing to spend your day with us. There are two groups I'd like to bring attention to. The first group is our dealers. We have our premier dealers on site at each location to answer any questions that you might have. The second group is our employee team. We are the ones wearing the green quarter zips. Our entire team, every department, plays a major role in the success of Winter Conference and we are here to help you. Please let us know if you need anything. Throughout one of the sessions today, if you hear something you would like some more clarification on or further information, you can text PRECISION to the number on the screen to start chatting with a Precision Planting employee. If you are a certified crop advisor, this event is credited for six CCU credits be sure to sign up on the form located near the entrance. Here at Precision Planting, we, there's a word we often use, and that word is better. We strive to be better employees and better teammates. 
We look at the status quo and we find ways to challenge it. But no matter what problem we are trying to solve or what task is at hand, there is always one focus that remains the same, and that is you, the farmer. And I think throughout today's sessions, you are going to see just that. We are super excited to kick off the rest of the day. At this time, I'm gonna turn it over to your remote hosts to welcome you. Thank you.